Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. In this video, we are going to be going over the Dark Knight for beginners. Alright, we're going to be go covering the whole job because I am well versed in this job since I played it as a main tank before Gunbreaker took over. Alright, so this is going to be from 1 to 80. You unlock Dark Knight in Ishgard after you get to Ishgard in the main story, but it starts at level 30. It uses a great sword for its weapon. You are going to be using two gauges for this tank. The blood gauge, which is easier to manipulate, and dark side gauge, which is the one below it. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Alright, so you have your basic rotation of Hard Slash, Siphon Strike, and Soul Eater. Unleash is your AoE. Grit is your tank stance. Unmend is your ranged attack. And Flood of Darkness is your other AoE. This will activate Dark Side, which is going to increase your damage by 10% for 30 seconds, and you can go up to 60 seconds. You're going to be maintaining this every single time. So Hard Slash just does damage of potency of 200. Siphon Strike has a potency of 300 with the combo, and it restores MP, just like Paladin. Third attack is Soul Eater, which is combos off a of Siphon Strike for 400 potency, and restores HP with 300 cure potency and gives you 20 blood gauge. So it's Paladin and Warrior into one is best to describe Dark Knight. And the Flood of Darkness is your AoE. 250 till enemies before you in a straight line. Grants the dark side for 30 seconds. Increases damage by 10%. And you can do it up to 60 seconds. And it shares a recast timer with the Edge of Darkness, which is going to be your single target version. Alright, so you're going to be using these two in conjunction. Blood Weapon will basically grant you 10 blood gauge for every attack that you land. And restores MP upon landing those weapon skills or spells since some of these are categorized as spells for some reason. Effect does not stack when hitting multiple targets with a single target attack. And this lands for 10 seconds. A lot of these have a recast timer of 60 seconds. Your first defense is going to be Shadow Wall for Dark Knight. Reduces damage by 30% for 15 seconds. 120 recast time. And of course you still have the rolls from the other tanks as well. Alright, Edge of Darkness is going to be your single target and does the same thing as Flood of Darkness. Dark Mind is going to be your magic vulnerability reduction by 20% for 10 seconds. Recast timer of 60 seconds. Shocker. Living Dead, the worst oh crap moment of all tanks. You are given the effect of Living Dead. If your HP drops to zero, you will get Walking Dead, which means if you're not healed to 100% of your HP, you will die. It's the crappiest one of all. Benediction from White Mage is the best bet for survival. Everybody else is going to have a hard time getting yourself up there. But Living Dead is the worst one of all. All right. Salted Earth is going to be your AoE dot. Create a patch of Salted Earth, dealing unexpected damage with a potency of 60 to any enemy who enters for 15 seconds, and a recast timer of 90 seconds. Plunge is going to be your Gap Closer. The only one does not use the gauge for your Gap Closer. Paladins and Warriors need your gauge. And you have a charge of 2, but the recast timer is 30 seconds. Abyssal Drain deals unexpected damage with a potency of 200 to targets and all enemies nearby it. Restores own HP with a current potency of 200 and recast timer of 60 seconds. Carven Spit deals a attack, a uh, threefold attack with a potency of 450. Restores MP. 60 second recast time. Then we have Blood Spiller, which uses your blood gauge. So there's an attack of 600 with a cost of 50. That's going to be a single target. Quietus will be your AoE with your Blood Gauge. Does 210 potency to all nearby enemies with 50 Blood Gauge. So single target, AoE. Delirium, which was changed from the original, allows the execution of these two abilities. 
without the cost of gauge. Restores MP when landing either weapon skill. This is your inner release flight from warrior, which we'll cover that in the advanced guide for those two. So this, why, this is the reason why they say that Dark Knight is just a carbon copy of Warrior. Which I don't complain. Alright. And we have level 70, the Blackest Knight. The best mitigation in the entire game. Which offsets Living Dead's crappy effect. Alright, it costs 3000 MP. Uh, Flood and Edge of Darkness also uses 3000 MP. But the Blackest Knight will nullify the MP cost if the shield breaks. So it creates a barrier around the target that absorbs damage, totaling 25% of your max HP. 7 seconds to break it. Grants Dark Arts when barrier is completely absorbed or broken. Dark Arts consumes Dark Arts instead of MP to execute Edge of Shadow or Flood of Shadow. Or the upgraded version of these when you get the trait. Alright, this can be applied to you or someone else. A lot of the times you want to use this over these and then use the Blackest Knight secondary attack uh, effect to activate these. All right. Stull Wart Soul. Deals unexpected damage to potency of 100. Combos off of Unleash, so you can't complete your combo of AoE until level 72. Restores MP and gives you 20 blood gauge. Flood of Shadow and Edge of Shadow is the buffed version of Flood of Darkness and Edge of Darkness. The trait, um, Dark Side Mastery at level 74 will increase that. Your Black Blood and Enhanced Black Blood allows the blood gauge accumulation upon landing of any weapon skill or spell under the effect of blood weapon. These are the two traits at level 62 and 66. And Enhanced Plunge allows the charge to be used up to two at the level 78. Alright, so these are the upgraded versions. Dark Missionary. Yeah, there's some kind of sexual joke in there somewhere. Uh, reduces magic damage taken by self and nearby party members by 10% for 15 seconds. 90 second recast time. And Living Shadow. Conjurer a simulacrum of your dark side to fight alongside you. Cost, uh, cost 50 blood gauge duration of 24 seconds and the attack potency of your double ganger is 300. You will ultimately know this person as Frey from the story. Alright, so Dark Knight has, is very simple, very easy to understand and that's why I like it so much. Alright, so now let's do a little demonstration of how Dark Knight operates in battle. So make sure your grit is up. All right, so you want to start off with your darkness gauge. Get it up to at least a 60 by doing it twice. Your basic combos. Your blood gauge will go up when you're doing Soul Eater. Blood weapon should always be used first to get that blood gauge up and of course to regenerate your MP. And when your MP gets up to max, if, of course, Blackest Knight barrier will not be broken, then go ahead and do Edge or Flutter Shadow. If you know your barrier is going to be broken, utilize that and get your free proc for Edge or Flutter Shadow. So when your blood gauge is up, you want to use Living Shadow first. Or you want this on cooldown. When you summon him, he'll pop up and then he'll do attacks at random. Basically everything in your toolkit. Right, his gauge will be behind your darkness gauge or dark side. And then here we'll dissipate. Alright, so his gauge or his countdown will start the minute you pull him out of your soul. Alright. Now we have delirium, which allows you to do blood spill or quietus until the 10 seconds is up. Obviously you do blood spiller, spiller for a single target, quietest for AoE. Alright, so with your MP you can obviously have your blood weapon, you have your carbon spit. 
So make sure you utilize those to get your MP up. And then you also be regenerating it through your combo. So you're constantly regenerating your MP and healing yourself with Soul Eater. Make sure you always put down Souls of Earth at all times. And constantly use your blood gauge since edge on um, your living shadow is not off cooldown so until that comes back start using blood spiller and quietus your range attack and you have your unleash and your soul which restores mp as well you always will cap at 600 make sure you're using your plunge and refreshing your dark side. So pretty much that's about it. Just continue doing your rotation. Make sure you use your MP regenerating uh, regenerative abilities. Make sure you never cap on your MP and utilize the blackest night. If you know the barrier will not break then don't waste your MP on it. Go with the edge or flood to regenerate your dark side if you know it's going to break utilize that and then use the proc with edge and thought of shadow and abyssal drain works better with more targets so i believe you do get mp uh, hp recovery from every single target hit all right so a lot of these are going to be on a 60 second cooldown so they all will pop up at the same time when you use it all right you have your dark side or dark missionary you have your dark mind for magic you have your shadow wall rampart for defense and of course the blackest knight so dark knight is just a gigantic shield generator which is pretty cool and they also have a mount that is specific to them the black panther you have the battle one which is has armor and then you have the one that's without the armor All right, so that is basically Dark Knight in a nutshell. All right, uh, I think a lot of the damage in this game is magical. So Dark Knight is a very, very good tank if you're dealing with a lot of magic enemies. And the Blackest Knight is just amazing for yourself or another target. Most of the healers. Since they, if you put on a healer, you know they're going to get broken on a healer because they're damaged. From physical is pretty low so putting this on someone else besides you can be a good idea if you're an off tank dark knight putting this on your main tank for a tank buster will definitely make sure it will break all right so depending on who you're playing with if you're off tank or main tank the blackest knight can be used very very efficiently all right so this is just going to be like a beginner's guide to dark knight if you want something more complex, there's other YouTubers out there that know more than me. I am not an expert on these jobs. I play them casually since I just do casual content with tanks. I don't extreme, I don't do savage, I don't do ultimate. So if you're looking for something more complex, there are other people out there on YouTube that will help you understand the job a little bit more. All right. So guys, that is pretty much going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this useful. Any comments, questions, and or concerns, please put them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out with any questions you might have. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new for more Final Fantasy XIV content and join the first brood. As a reminder, make sure you hit that notification bell next to my subscribe button. It's where you guys never miss an upload. And if you like, you can join my Discord server in the About section of my YouTube channel all right at the bottom. Or hit the world icon on my YouTube banner. So until next time, may you forever walk in the glorious light of Lord Bahamut. Take care, guys.